EastEnders fans and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week, discussing the episodes broadcast between the 25th and the 28th of March, 2024. Hello, how are you? Hope you're marvellous. Joining me as usual is Ree. Hello, Ree. How are you this week? All right, Rob. How are you? How are you? I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. So, Ree is uh, Ree's telling me that she's got plans to go somewhere and she won't tell me what they are until <laughs> you lot are listening. Because she's now turned into oh, one of those types of YouTubers. No, no, no. You have turned now. All it's taken is just to get to 50 episodes of this podcast and you've turned into a tuber where you're like, no, no, wait till the cameras are on, mate. Wait till the cameras are yeah. on and then I'll tell you all. Yeah, so Live go on, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So says... go on and get those views up. Tell us where you're going. <laughs> Brighton! Oh, right, yes. <laughs> That's... I'm hoping to bump into uh, Suki and Eve while I'm there, you see. You might do, yes, yes. You see? Yes, I'm off to Brighton for my daughter's second birthday. Are you taking Not a club next in? next week, the week after. No. Mm-hmm. I was hoping more to... the beach, if the weather's nice. If Donkeys. not, we're going to have to find some indoor activities. If anyone's from Brighton and you've got anything that you recommend us doing with a toddler, genuinely, please comment, because I have no mm. idea. Never been before. So, so what yes. made you land on Brighton, if you're not quite sure what you're doing there? Just don't. Um, it's been... <laughs> A fair question. Trying to decide something to do. <laughs> Did you literally just something. open an atlas and go oh, there? Because atlas is still, yeah. atlas is still I, exist, don't they? <laughs> I actually don't even know how we got to Brighton, but that's where we ended no. up. Because you don't live anywhere up. near Brighton, Ree. Really. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure how you've landed on that, but there you go. Well, we. I've always wanted to go. Me and my have partner you? have always said, like, oh, we won't mind going. Yeah, it's meant to be a nice place, isn't it, Brighton? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Marvellous. Eve thinks uh, so, and I'll take Eve's Eve recommendation. Loves it. If you're ever having a bad time, you run away to Brighton. That's so, that's the EastEnders way, you know? So, so you know, there you go. I'm here for it. Let us know what it's like, Reed. I hope you have a lovely time in Brighton. I will. Um, Thank you. So, uh, this week, uh, it's been a bit of a week, hasn't it? It's we... been quite hard to keep up, I shan't lie, Rob. Well, it's, it's been, been a week lot. where well, anyway, we've... Yes. <laughs> Uh, and we've got quite a lot of stories to discuss this week, including uh, the big one, which is the end of Ben, the end of Balam, one might argue. Is it I the mean, end of Balam, though? Well, is you it know, the end? Callum says that it's he's all full of good intentions of, I'll wait for you. But I, you know, it's Walford, isn't it? Oh, I, ben, ben won't wait for Callum. Whatever. What are you chatting? Whatever. Like, you can throw all the dedication you like at me, all right? You know, say, oh, Callum, Callum is Ben's soulmate. He won't even look at another man while Ben's in prison. I bet you a fiver that he does. All right. Oh, see, I think it'll be Ben on crack first, and then Callum will be like, well, if Ben's done it, mm. we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait All and right, see. This I'll, could be. Let's, put, let's have a little bet, shall we, Rob? By the end I of bet the year, it's Callum first. Yeah, I bet. Ben no, I said, even. I say, I bet. It's, ben, well, I mean, we're not going to know. Ben, ben, ben. We're not going to know if it's Ben first because Ben's not going to be around, is he? Yeah, but we'll hear off screen, surely. Surely. Maybe. But I bet you were five. By the end of the year, Callum has slept with somebody else. All right, yeah. No, fair, because I agree with that, so I won't bet it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tight as a crab's arse, you are. <laughs> tell you. Right. Um, so, yes, we should discuss Ben's exit uh, later on in the episode before. Uh, we've got a load of other stories to discuss first, so let's get on with this week's Albert Square After Dark. So uh, let's get cracking on. We're talking about, uh, first of all, Jade, Dean and Jean. Uh, this took a turn this week. We suspected that Sherlock Jean had her suspicions about what was going on. And she actually landed on the truth this week, didn't she? Yes, but I don't think that I think that she actually believed Dean last week, by the way. OK. That from this week, I think that she believed what he said. And then she was like, hmm, so um, sceptical. Well, I don't know because otherwise, what if she believed him last week? Then why did she go looking Deep in the pills pressing. and everything? Yeah, because I think that he started being more sus, and then she like, "Hang on, mm. what you're saying is not right." Anyway, I don't know. Well, irrelevant now. Anyway, last week's happened, hasn't it? Well, I mean, so uh, Jean basically lands on what exactly has been going on with Dean and Jade this week when she's kind of going through the pills. Like she gets, mm-hmm. she goes into the flat. Uh, sort of with the pretense of like looking after Jade and then looks in these pills and medication because she's convinced that something's been going on with the medication and discovers that the pills are all empty. Mm. And then when she throws it at Dean saying, uh, what the hell? Dean then turns it around on Jean 
plants these empty pill like capsules in her handbag and is trying basically to make Jean think that she's having an episode. Yeah, I'm not buying it, to be honest. I'm not buying that Jean would just fall for it. I thought when Dean was saying it to her, she was going to be like, oh my God, now I'm seeing how dark you are and that you would make up a lie like this. But instead she believes it. I don't know if she does believe him though. Here's the thing. She says that she's going off like to sort of get her head together and have a rest and all that kind of thing. I don't believe that. I actually think she's gone for reinforcements, which means that she's either coming back with Shirley or she's gone to talk to, or she's coming. I think she's coming back with somebody. She, this might be no, but how she said, Fred and Mo... No, she's, she said she's going to see Mo and Freddie, so surely she's just going yeah. to come back with Mo and so Freddie. She might come back with them, but I, I do not believe that she is believing Dean, Dean with this at all. I think she's trying to just get out of the way of it all for now and sort of think of a plan to how to help Jade. I don't see... Oh, okay. Well, I... Oh. I I thought that she fully believed it, which I wasn't believing that she. I think she. I it. think she started believing it. I think she thought that there was a possibility of what he was saying was right, but I think that she once she started to kind of think about it, she spoke to Harvey. Harvey kind of said to her, mm, "I'm not really noticing anything, but you have been overdoing it a bit." Well, she but she said I... that she's got gaps in her memory. Yeah, I know, but I don't. Which is what I she... think. Oh, I think that she does believe it, and I don't oh. think that Jean would believe it. But yeah, I think yeah, written yeah. it that she is. Okay. And that that's why she's going. And like I said, when she was saying the thing about having gaps in her memory and stuff, I was yeah. like, you actually believe it, don't you then? Like, why is she having gaps in her memory? Because she's exhausted uh, and... Because she's... Ex- well, that's the... That's what we saw what, if he's been tamper- what if he's been tampering with Jean's events too? How will he have so done that, that? she would believe it. I don't know. Ask Dean. Has, I'll ask Dean, I'll, give him a, I'll give him a ring. He's an expert on tampering <laughs> with medication. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's frustrating because we know how, you know, Dean is like properly the villain in this situation. We've always got sympathy for Jean whenever anybody is remotely sort of goes near Jean's mental health. We're, we're, our hackles are up as viewers and fans. Mm-hmm. We're like, stay away from Jean. Like little chihuahuas. Um, so I kind of want to, this is what I mean, though. I think that Jean isn't as daft as this. I think that but, she's... So I think she, that, but I feel like Jean's taken herself away because she thinks she's been causing Jade harm. So if she thought that Dean was actually doing something, surely yeah. she'd want to stay to keep an eye on Jade in some capacity. Maybe, but then at the same time, Dean's not going to let her near Jade at the moment anyway. So maybe mm. it's better to sort of take a step back. I think that she's going to be on the phone to Shirley. Pennis has said oh. that Shirley, we haven't seen the last of Shirley, so this would be a good time for Shirley to come back. I agree, but I actually think in this particular case, she's believed what he said and she's just gone to go and stay with Mo and Freddie and then she's going to come back with Big Mo and Freddie. She's definitely going to come back with Big Mo and Freddie. This is how this is probably going to be how Big Mo and Freddie return. Um, I'm sort of... I don't know how long this is going to take. Meanwhile, this leaves Harvey yeah. in with Dean. This leaves Harvey to sort of deal with the Dean aftermath and the Dean fallout. I hear tell that... That's very much going to be the, the next focus of this of this story, oh. sort of Harvey versus Dean. So that's going to be interesting to sort of see play out. But oh, I, don't know. I didn't know that that would come in. But then, yeah. But then Harvey's kind of bought into it as well with Jean and said, "Well, you have been exhausted." And I don't yeah, know. There's I something think... not quite right with this. With a... yeah. you're right though, because like, it, it, why would she believe it? So maybe, maybe that is what it is. I don't know. If she's getting gaps in her memory because she's tired. The thing is about Jean, though, is that she's going to be very oversensitive about her mental health because mm. when you're in that situation with Jean, when you're when you you know when you are at risk of having these episodes, I think you've got to be hypersensitive to anything that sort of mm. suggests that a, an episode is coming or that you or mm. something's got or something's going wrong in your head. So I wonder if maybe there's a bit of consideration there. Like, right, okay, if if he's right, I don't think he is. But if he is right, I'm just going to take myself away from the situation for now. Yeah. Just sort of reconvene a little moment. And when I'm convinced that I'm okay, then I can look at this from a different angle. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Mm. I mean, let us know in the comments section. Uh, we're, I mean, because clearly we, we're, dis- we're disagreeing on what we think that Gene's perspective is on this, which is interesting. So let us know in the comments section, who do, you, who do you agree with? Do you think Jean knows what's going on? Do you think that she is completely and utterly believing Dean? Let, let us know in the comments section below. Uh, and we'll return to this when uh, Harvey and Dean uh, butt horns. Uh, right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the next story. 
On to Whitney, Brittany and Zach now. So Whitney's back. Uh, Zach's planning a little baby shower. Uh, and that all seems to be going quite nicely until Brittany follows Whitney into the pub. Um, were you surprised to see Brittany? Did you think that she was going to come back with Whitney at any point? I thought it was kind of obvious that that's where it was going. Because we the last would, time we saw yeah. Whitney, she was, Keely was saying, oh, take her off my hands then. So you kind of felt that that was probably where it was going to go. I didn't think that Brittany would, uh, Whitney would be paying for it, though. No, that well, surprised me. to be fair, Keely did set up, put your money where your mouth is. So maybe she'll Yeah, I know. I didn't, make, I didn't make the connection. Also, no, I didn't at the two time. grand, quite easily pleased, didn't she? Yeah, two I grand know, for I a kid. that, right? Right. Also, I mean, right, wouldn't, wouldn't have thought Whitney would have that in the savings either, to be fair. So well, fair I kind of thought, I thought that two grand living in London was kind of realistic sum to have in your... You know, you're having your savings for somebody. I thought I didn't. That and maybe that's why it was two grand because otherwise yeah, nobody else. Say, no way was Whitney gonna have otherwise. like ten grand signed or, yeah. or anything like that. Was Gotta she? be realistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know. Some are it's believable. Some are it's not. I I imagine she was going to come back with Britney somehow, but I wasn't expecting it to be. Well, obviously, what has happened, but then. Why would why would they agree for you to foster a kid without Zach being involved and talking to Zach? Surely yeah. that's like a joint decision type of thing. Because certainly, wouldn't they need to question everybody who lives in the household? But wouldn't Zach Probably. know this? Probably. Wouldn't Zach know this? Because they've done this process. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, either way, Zach ain't happy because Whitney has completely and utterly kept him out of all communications mm. to do with this. Um, and you sort of understand it from Zach's point of view, I think, that she's literally sort of not really thinking about the pregnancy or anything like that. She's not particularly taking it easy. She's just focused on Brittany. And Brittany and Zach have nothing to do with each other. So I can sort of see why Zach's feeling a little bit pushed out. Well, yeah, completely. Like, you've just agreed to foster a kid without even consulting him about yeah. it properly. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like Whitney's doing it as a bit of a distraction from a pregnancy, though? Maybe. I feel like she's trying to... She's trying not to think about her pregnancy too much because of what happened to Pete. She's just trying to get through it until yeah, she gets yeah, to the yeah. birth. Could I feel be. like it's a distraction for her, if anything. Yeah, I can but see that. But she's not aware of it being a distraction. That's, yeah, it's that's a subconscious how I'm viewing distra- it. It's a subconscious yeah. distraction. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we discover that this transaction has taken place because it's Lauren's 30th this week. Um, just a side note with the whole Lauren and Peter thing that's sort of still going on Peter's arranged his date what I thought by the way his date was very very up for the fact that she he she ended up for this first date right. that she went on this boat <laughs> with this first date that she went went with Wasn't Peter they go to his... but even if yeah. even if it wasn't a first date but they went why would to you go on a date to his, his ex's ex Thursday yeah. but she sat there with yeah, a glass of champagne around going happy birthday she's a, a keeper time. Peter she's a she keeper she seems quite time. understanding yeah. about this relationship yeah. you've got with your ex quite Happy. Keeper, yeah. Quite happy. So, yeah, yeah keep her around. <laughs> if anything, she just likes a party. Like, fair yeah. play to her. Yeah, we like her. The party, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I'll get pissed. That's fine. So you think Lauren and Peter are still a thing? Because oh, if yeah, I'm honest, of course. I'm, I'm thinking Lauren and Zach are going to end up getting together, you know? I think that's where they're uh, trying to lead things. They maybe. Had a little glan- Did you not see that little look they had with each other? Yeah, about? yeah. I mean, yeah, but the thing is, why... Would you like the like? Why would Peter go to Lauren's thirtieth in the first place? I know they're trying to be mates for the sake of Louis, but at the same time, you just wouldn't. Maybe that's what it is, just to show. Especially if you are on a date, can be especially if you are on a date, you wouldn't take your date know. to your ex's thirtieth. You wouldn't do that so unless wow. you are kind of still unless into. Peter Neil, clearly. No, actually, the date wasn't that bothered. She was flirting with somebody else at the back of the party, so all in maybe all. he thought, oh, she'll be right with it. Let's yeah. just, uh, why not? But she was, no, and I... she was. I can see it being Lauren and Zach have a little thing and then yeah. she ends up going back to Peter. That's right. what I think is going to end up happening. Yeah, it, could, it could be how Whitney and Zach split or something. Yeah, I mean, I do think that the Lauren thing is going to be the catalyst to Whit- for Whitney's exit yeah. because they're yeah. making a lot out of Whitney and Lauren being best mates and yeah. Lauren already has this secret that she's keeping yeah, from Whitney. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's presumably going to be the thing that eventually pushes Whitney away. Yeah. Now, whether that means that she's taking Britney with her and they just all go and live with Bianca and Milton Keynes, that's that's a possibility. Yeah, well, I'm assuming that she's gonna she's gonna say to Zach, "No, I'm not giving Britney up," or is she gonna get arrested for what she's done? 
I mean, that's a possibility. Maybe she's going to get shipped off to America with Beth. <laughs> Give birth in prison. I hope not. I really want Whitney to have a happy ending. Not. She doesn't deserve like a Ronnie type exit where like yeah. it's miserable all the way through her existence as a character. Like yeah. I want I want Whitney to have a happy ish ending. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be a fully happy ending because Zach isn't going with her, so she's not getting the family thing that she so mm. craves. But if she can just go off and live with Bianca and Milton Keynes and have the baby and all is well, and I'd be all right with that with for Whitney. But I don't. I think they need to try and write something in for Zach and Whitney to break up in the way that they're going to, because Zach would go with Whitney surely in those circumstances. Yeah, there is. To be yeah, with the, this, this is the thing. It needs to be something that we, that Whitney says, "No, me and you are done, and I don't want you mm. to come with me." Like what or that would Zach possibly says be. We're done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that mm. would be unless it's so. It's either going to be the Lauren thing or the Britney thing. Well, Either I, yeah, or both, both, possibly yeah. both. You know, there's sort of reasoning there as to why they would break up permanently, but at the same time, there's still going to be a kid of Zach's out there, so he's it's going to be difficult to sort of see Zach one being okay with staying in Walford while Whitney moves away. Yeah, that's it. That's I don't know though, it depends how they write it all in, doesn't it? I just mm. think. I think once Zach finds out that she bought Britney, essentially, he's Too gonna be grand. like, absolutely not. Do you yeah. think it's believable? Do you think Whitney would do that in these circumstances? Yeah, I do actually. I I didn't think it was out of character for Whitney to just do something silly for the mm. sake of this kid that she sees herself in. I I got yeah. I I understood that. Um, and the fact that two grand made it affordable. I mean, Keely, the, Keely's loss. In all fairness, two grand ain't gonna last you a month these days. So, no, not in, well, she's in Milton Keynes, right. isn't she? But still, the price of crack, staff. price of crack, or whatever she's on, heroin, or, or whatever <laughs> drug she's know, on. I don't know. I don't know what the street rate is these days. When when no. we were at uni, it wasn't that expensive to get hold of, but I don't know what it is these days. <laughs> you were on crack, were you, Rob? You didn't tell me. I tell you what, did got my, I got my degree <laughs> <laughs> somehow. Somehow, genuinely, somehow, let me tell you. Uh, there we are then. So we'll see what kind of goes on there. What yeah. I do know is that Shona McCarty is actually still filming. So, oh, right, okay. Yeah, so we ain't anywhere close to Whitney's exit just yet. Interesting. It's one of those, it's one of those long-running just... ones where we get told that she's leaving and they haven't even got, got around to filming the exit yet. So it's... If I'm honest, right, realistically, if she's going to have this baby, I can't see that she would keep fostering Britney at the same time. Like, in real life. It's going to be I'm interesting. Wrong. I'm sure some people do do that. But... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. But I am interested, actually, to sort of see how Whitney then deals with it. Like, when she eventually gives birth to this baby, all mm. being well, um, you're kind of wondering, like you say, like, is she going to sort of be like, all right, Brittany, that was lovely. Thanks very much. You can go back to your mum now. Exactly. Or is that going to really confuse her about who's priori- who, who she should be prioritising? Is she going to leave the baby with Zach and go off with Brittany? I can't see that happening. No, no, I no. can't see that happening at all. It's just like they're in that little two-bed flat. I mean, all right, the baby can sleep in their room with them for a bit, but, oh, my God, having a baby, just... yeah, how are you going to cope with a foster kid that needs so much care? I mean, I mean, so talking... demanding. And yeah, a I mean, baby. let's talk about Britney for a minute because she is a lot to sort of yeah. contend with. I, I do feel for Zach. I think that he could be he could be going about what he's doing and saying a little bit better in some regards. But on the other hand, I think he's actually dealing with it quite well because he's trying his best to actually include Britney in the sort of the family life and the home life and everything. So it's I think it's not he's bad. warmed. I think he's warmed to her really well and been quite nice. Yeah, actually, quite you know, he's quickly, had his moments yeah. at the start of the week yeah. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait until he finds out that actually none of it's official. He's gonna go. He's. I think this is gonna be what breaks him up, surely, because when he finds out, because like Lauren said, he could go down for it as well. There's no way that they won't believe that he didn't know about it when he's not signed. Surely they have to sign a paper or something, what or a contract or something. What if, in some weird turn of events, Brittany and Zach end up getting really close? Brittany stays with Zach and Whitney goes off and has the baby. Oh, God. Maybe. Is Brittany, is Brittany a long-term stay? Where is she I don't know. <laughs> well, she's with the kids. You can't really tell where the kids are in the credits. Ah, okay. Until you hit a certain age, you come of age in EastEnders as a kid actor when you go, in, when you go higher up the credits with the right. regulars. Until you hit about the age of 15, 16... Because uh, right, Lily, okay. Lily, Lily is still always at the end of the credits, and Ricky is still always at the end of the credits. But the likes of Denzel, Avani, Nugget, they're all in the regular ah, credits. And interesting. So you don't know. So that doesn't actually tell us anything. 
but well noted. Well noted, Drew. Well done. Well done. Uh, I mean, let that. us know. I do love that. I'm very proud. It's like, look at, I'm, I look, look at my protege learning all the stuff. Well done. Um, but I do like all the stuff with Brittany. Mm -hmm. She has clearly got a lot of issues that long term could be interesting to sort of see being ironed out. Which well, kind of makes me it. wonder whether she is good for a regular character mm. and that you could keep her around long term. Because she's clearly very damaged. Like, everything that's gone with her mum has clearly damaged her. She's, like, hoarding food and keeping under her bed because she doesn't know when she's next going to eat. She's wetting the bed. She's, like, stealing from markets and all that kind of thing. So she has still kind of got the mind of Milton Keynes. Although, don't tell anybody who lives in Milton Keynes that that's the case. Because <laughs> <laughs> they'll kick off. They're all like um, it, Milton Keynes. They're all like they're stealing apples you know what off Milton Keynes fruit kids are like? Stores. They're all the same. Aren't <laughs> you know what Milton Keynes kids are like? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so she's still sort of doing all that. So I think it could be interesting to sort of see this playing out long term. And I do think that the actress plays a really good awkward kid. Yeah, she is really good, actually. I, I mean, she's an award-winning actress, so we that's yeah, kind of what you, yeah, I'd see you'd, that. you'd expect it. So oh, you can I, tell. You can oh, you tell, can tell. Right? You yeah. can tell she's an award-winning actress. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. I, I, There's still a lot more to come with this. Like I say, Shona McCarthy yes. is still filming, so anything could happen still. Mm -hmm. um, well, let us know in the comment section. How do you see Whitney's exit playing out? Do you What do you see about Whitney, uh, Britney? So, uh, Get rid of her soon, ask. Whitney, I can't, Britney. I'm, Whitney, Britney. I'm too old to be making these mistakes. Um, let us know in the comment section where you see this storyline going. Uh, right, ladies and gents, next story. Uh, onto a slightly smaller story now. Priya and Martin's relationship and Avani's involvement in this. Um, I quite enjoyed Avani this week, I have to say. I like I've Avani. loved all of this. Yeah, I, I love, love Avani. Avani. I love Priya and I love Avani. I love them as a pairing. Um, do you see any future with Priya and Martin? I kind yeah. of don't. No. I think that she is, I think that he is a little bit vanilla for Priya, to be honest. Like she said, no, I like agree. Like she said. Yeah. I do yeah, think definitely. that. And I and Priya is still very interested in Ravi, clearly. Yeah. So I mean, Martin were telling her all about the, you know, fruit and veg like history and mm. how it's been passed down through the family. And I was like, oh God, she would she would not be remotely interested in that. <laughs> Which was very polite. I'll give her that for Priya. Like she was being quite polite. About usually it, so. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, does this not show the longevity of Ravi as a character? That you can just put him in a little mini storyline like this where, you know, his ex might be interested in him or his ex might not be interested in him and he might be a little bit jealous, but he's not trying to kill Martin over it or anything. He's just sort yeah, of that's acting true, yeah. like a relatively normal human being. He was trying to be nice, if anything. He offered to yeah. pay for the meal, didn't he? And said, oh, come on then. Man, yeah, I, I mean... Martin weren't happy when he found that out, were he? No, he weren't. But then uh, you, th you can kind of understand why. It's like, why is your ex paying for this meal? You sort of, you sort of get that. Yeah, and know. why is your daughter pouring wine over my crotch and calling me daddy? That's also a question you would ask, I think. <laughs> that means, Weirdly, you know... not even the first time that Avani's called him daddy. <laughs> no, I don't think it is, is it? No. Do you know the only thing I didn't like about Avani this week? And it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just didn't buy that Ravi would believe it. You know, and she went in sobbing to him saying, oh, mum's really ill. And I thought, <laughs> come on, Ravi, surely you don't believe that. Like, it's so obvious that she's putting it on. That was the only thing I like. No, uh, yeah, I know on. what you mean. But I at least it gave us a shot of what Priya considers sexy lingerie. My switch <laughs> woo. Switch woo in her velvet dressing gown. <laughs> Hey, do you know what though? Like, I've I've loved Priya's uh, wardrobe this week. I've been like, oh, she is a totally in character. I I'm if I'm I a was huge Priya stan, you know. I reckon it. If I was a woman, I'd wear Priya's clothes. I happily. was I was thinking if I was slimmer, would I wear Priya's clothes? Actually, was what I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, I probably would. I'd try wear it. Priya. I'd wear Priya's clothes at my size. Bollocks to it. Oh, well. I would. No, it'd be fine. You're right. Massive, You're quite right. Massive man. hoop earrings. Whatever you want, you should wear it whatever worked you want. For it, and I'd have short skirt showing off my thunder thighs. It worked for David off Big Brother, so why couldn't it work for me? I say, you know, so controversial, Rob, to what? say there. Anyway, I've got thunder thighs. I'm allowed to say it about myself. Oh, you know? Okay, right. Okay, say it about yourself. Okay. I'm trying to get me cancelled, Dre. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I took it the wrong way. It's me taking <laughs> it the wrong way. It was my fault. Cancel me. Don't cancel Rob. Cancel, cancel her, <laughs> cancel her. Uh, uh, right. Anywho, so I kind of, I, I am enjoying Priya. I am enjoying Avani. I love their relationship as mother and daughter. 
I liked the little, the like the, the more tender moment when Priya sort of went in. She didn't go in all guns blazing after Irvani ruined the date. She sort of was like, right, there's something up with you. I'm going to be tender. I'm going to go with the softly, softly monkey catchy thingy approach <laughs> and and sort of find out what's going yeah. on. So I liked that. They have a very tender relationship. They will have a fiery time together as characters, but well, I, I love their relationship. It's really what's, working. What's interesting, we, we had that little discussion last week about is she a great mum? And I saw yes. a comment. I will try and saying, find it if I can. Yeah, saying uh, some... no. <laughs> no, it was a so it was Stephen Brody on YouTube who said Avani and Priya for sure have a good relationship, but a great mother that's not the same thing. From what we've seen, Priya didn't do anything other than keep Avani alive. I had the same issue with Karen. We were constantly told she's a great mum, but really didn't see a huge amount. Mm. I mean, this, this is the thing, I, and I'd actually be quite interested in us having a proper like discussion about what makes a good soap mum and like a the bonus differences. episode. Bonus perhaps. episode, maybe. Let us know if you're interested in that because mm-hmm. I am. Um, but you know, uh, arguably, the moment where she kind of went in, knew how to deal with Ivani, and knew how to get the, what was actually exactly. wrong with her out of her. That's a good mum, you know. Uh, so is, that's what I think. You kind of got to wonder whether a soap mum is necessarily going to make a good soap character you know if she's setting a good I'm... example, you know? it's. You know what? You talk about having a village around you when you're a mum, right? Mm. I don't know at what age that village is supposed to stop or when you're supposed to expect that support, but perhaps because Priya's now got this village around her, she's got support with Ivane and Nugget, yeah. mm-hmm. it can be the, good, the great mum that she's had within her. Yeah. Because she's not had any support before. She's not yeah. been able to be the best mum that she could be. Yeah. But now, you know, there's not as much pressure and it all being on her. I think we're seeing a great mum, personally. Yeah. Interesting. We'll have a proper discussion about uh, soap mums mm. one day. I'd, I'd be, I would be interested to sort of uh, see, get her takes on it. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to sort of see Priya and Avani's relationship grow from here. I can't see a massive future for her and Martin. I must be honest. Uh, you know, no. Martin and Stacey are probably more destined to be together, and Rhea and Priya are probably Rhea. R- R- what's his name? Ravi and Priya <laughs> are more likely to kind of be pulled together because they've got that history, and I think they're both should be bonk- named there, Rob. Rhea. There you go. Thank yeah. <laughs> um and they're kind of both bonkers enough to be attracted to each other as well you know like i yeah, think one I, ex- think... I think one yeah. excites the other they've got that sort of chemistry about them where you know if some if one of them commits a crime the other one will just go mad over it so well, oh yeah oh yeah do like more that. crimes you want rob a bank <laughs> 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 um, but there we are then. So I yeah. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see more of Priya and Avani. Love them. Uh yeah. right, ladies and gentlemen, we shall move on to the next story. <laughs> on to Denzel now. I have a I have oh, oh do, not. do not do Excuse not speak to me. You do not speak like that to the former CEO of the Minute Mart. Excuse um, you, me, I mister. Think Andy should have been like, excuse yeah. me, and get him back a bit more. Giving him shit. some of the agafa- too shocked. Giving too him shocked. some of the giving some of the agafa treatment is what he deserves. Let me right. tell you. Can we clear one thing up that I'm confused yes. about with all this? Yes. So Denzel's got this package. Yolanda's got it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this the first lot? Because see, because he's Nugget acting like said, an arsehole. So surely he's already had it, but then Nugget went see, not even started taking it and yeah. acting like this. Yeah. Was which... it? I thought he. It's a bit weird because it's sort of like you can't be dependent on a drug that you haven't taken yet, surely. And this the way he I was act- and the way he was acting implied that he'd been taking it for a little while because he was acting yeah. really bolshy, yeah. really right, aggressively, okay. and very unlike the Denzel we that we've known. So, so maybe Nugget just assumed that he. This well, is no, the because. Lot. No, because Jaden, the actor who plays Denzel, has been on Instagram and like confirmed that this is the first time that he's taken it. Oh, I did see that post. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So this so is just first... being Aggie Santos anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, just being an absolute arsehole all week. Not a prude, not no gold star for Denzel, let me tell you. Oh, no, um, that is immediately what I thought. You do not Couldn't get a gold a, star. Uh, I don't know what would be the... An anti-star. <laughs> gold What's the, star? Yeah, we should, an anti-star. We should start a thing where we punish a character every week. A red star. <laughs> a red star. A cross. A big black cross. Mm. Um, A big red cross. Um, It's... it's <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting there. I mean, I do like this storyline because I think it's actually really, especially when he was stood in front of the mirror and was sort of looking at himself. This is really going into yeah, sort of body image issues and, and all mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Really interesting, especially for a teenage boy character. Really relevant, really important story to tell. I'm 100% behind it. 
but you don't call your landing an, a stupid old bitch. That's I mean, just bang out. Honestly, of order. I was shocked. And when you don't slag that? off her and you don't slag off her cooking either. Do you know what? She should be like, right, I tell you what, fend for yourself, kid. I wondered what you were gonna say then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I no, thought no, that no, was no. going. That's where I thought that was going. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse, right? So you said mum's not here, your dad's not here. God knows where your real mum is, right? Yeah. And now you're having to go at your and saying yeah. that her food's off and that yeah. what she's cooking. I bet you any money that your landed's food is banging. So it's I don't know what he's on about. Fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Uh, um, so it, it's very undenzel like as well to be walking in like that and being. It's all very undenzel like this. Yeah, I mean, this is the it. thing. This is the thing that confused me was the fact that if he'd already been taking the steroids, it wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have batted an eyelid because it's exactly, like, yeah, well, this right? is what hap- This is mm. what happens. This is the sort of personality changes it gives you. But the fact that he's not even taken a single one and he's literally just really annoyed because the you know, land is keeping this package from him where he starts acting really mm. aggressively to everybody. Mm. It kind of didn't really ring true. So. Yeah. Now he's gonna he's actually taking it, it will feel a bit more natural. But before that, it's sort of just like you're just being an arsehole because you're getting a bit impatient, basically. Yeah, or is it because you know he's got all this pent up anger that he's not getting mm, out or something and he maybe. needs to be gymming? But then again, you know, there were one point you were just sat playing video games and I thought, Oh, you no. got time for video games, I thought you'd be doing a workout or something, you're that obsessed. I don't know. Maybe he thought, oh, I can have a break now, I've got steroids coming. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, play a bit of Crash I mean, Bandicoot. I'm sure that's not what they played. It's uh, be a great <laughs> game choice. That would cut. That actually, no. Do you know what? That wouldn't calm me down. That game. No, 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 no. no it no. would not. No, no it, it would not. not. Oh, oh you, no. Anybody who's played Crash Bandicoot, especially the latest version, <laughs> will know what now. I mean. You'll know what I mean. Fantastic game, but my God, you break. You can easily break a controller. Let me tell you. Um. Anyway. <laughs> So he has a falling out with Nugget this week as well. I really liked the scene between Denzel and Nugget, actually. I love Nugget so much. It, it, like, anybody who goes for Nugget, I'm automatically really defensive. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, yeah. I, and I really... I, yeah, I agree. And I love the fact that Nugget was prepared to sort of, like, distract Yolandi, but then Cat walks in, having a meltdown because she'd forgotten a makeup bag and then just sees Denzel going for Yolandi's handbag. Um, and Nugget kind of gets the... Gets, the raw end of a deal when Denzel starts having to go at him because Nugget realises that that ain't no picture frame in your package. Pulls out of his hand and discovers what he's actually ordered and then reels off. Nugget knows all about steroids. Nugget's done his research. Uh, you won't be able to get it up. You'll turn into an arsehole. You, you don't need them. You know, well, so... right now when you think Ravi's got a bit of a gym background, clearly uh, yeah. maybe Nugget knows some bits and his dad's warned him off or something. Possibly, yeah. Him, you know, That's, you shouldn't be doing yeah. if you ever yeah. think about it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because his dad's a bit of a beefcake, but that's clearly all been sort of natural, you know? So it's... Do you know what? I The other thing, though, because Yolandi was very much respecting his privacy about not opening this package and him telling mm. her it's a photo frame. You can feel it's not a photo frame, surely. I'm not being funny, but if, if someone told had ordered something... never told it was a picture frame, though, to be fair, did he? Oh, uh, he told that to Nugget, yeah. 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 But still... He ordered something off Yolandi's bank card. Yeah, that's why she's angry with you. So I'd be... Yeah, but well, like, I'm sorry. If you've twisted. ordered something off my bank card, I'm earning yeah. it to see why I, you're getting yeah. so angry. Yeah, what, have I, what right. have I just, what have I just ju- bought? Yeah. So you've just ordered something off my bank card. Fraud, by the way. Right? Yeah. And now you're calling me a stupid old bitch. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm opening that package and I'm pushing it down the toilet when I see what it is. Look at the mother coming out in her. This wasn't the read that I knew five <laughs> years ago. Let me tell you. <laughs> Relandy over here, <laughs> but you're right. I'd though, be honoured. I'd be honoured. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. No. I re- I really felt for Yolandi this week, as if she hasn't got enough to be dealing with. With an evil vicar after her, you know, and then she got to deal with a stroppy teenager calling her a stupid old bitch. I think. Also, not. as if Yolandi's ended up being his like primary carer. Like, how's that even happened anyway? I don't you know think she I mean? wanted to be in this situation. Put it like She's... that. She's not even known him that long, and now no. she's getting all this off him. I'd be, I'd be ringing his dad up and being like, "You want to get your ass it back, makes, pal?" It makes it harder though because they have developed a close relationship quite quickly, know. you know. Yeah, and I, know. I think that's why Yolandi is so shocked and upset by his behaviour, mm. like really hurt by it as well. So, mm. I get it, I do get it, but it's kind of frustrating to watch. And hurt anybody in the square you like, but leave Yolandi alone. In a way, though, is Denzel living up to this impression? Of Denzel that she had from the start. Remember, she was making out with this really bad lad when he wasn't. Yeah. So now he's like, well, if you're going to think that, I'll live up to it kind of mm. thing as well. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to sort of see. I, I, because Howie and Kim have been away for three months already, so I don't know how much longer they're away that. for. I know it's it flown by, isn't it? Quick. Um, so I don't know how long they're much longer mm. they're away for with the mermaid and the weird ventriloquist. Uh, it was but three months. Okay, it, it can't be head. much. It can't be much longer. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I doubt they're back at filming just yet, but it won't be too much longer before they are. Yeah. I would suspect. So. It'll be interesting to sort of see what happens when they, when Kim and Howie get back. Um, Patrick, as well, would have been a really good sort of person to have around, but he's visiting yeah. Anthony. Not sure how long for. So Yolandi is literally on her own with it all at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So, and now Denzel is sort of pushing her to get away. Yolandi's washed her hands of him. So, and Amy's, you can tell his relationship with Amy's sort of hanging by a thread at the moment as mm. well. So... At some point, this is, I think it's only going to be George in the background. I think it was quite relevant that George witnessed the argument between him and Nugget. Yes. So that's going to, I think George is very much going to be sort of taking centre stage with Denzel pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Again, I'd be interested to sort of see Zach's involvement in this because obviously Zach has his own history with steroids. Mm-hmm. I mean, differently taken. I know that was needles, hence, you know, why we, why, you know. Hey, but... I, do you know something? I'm learning about steroid usage because in my head, you could only have steroids if you injected it. And I'm yeah, I certainly like, oh, you I, can have yeah. it in pill form. Oh right, yeah, well, you're getting prescribed, of course yeah, you can't in pill yeah. form. And yeah. There you go. So we will see where this goes. Well. Educational. That's the BBC's charter. Educational and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, so we will discover where Denzel ends up. My guess is it's not gonna go well for a fair few weeks no. before it gets better. It's gonna get much, much worse. So mm-hmm. bring the storyline on though, really important. And I'm glad that they are really focusing on the body image aspect of it because that is huge at the moment. It really is. So definitely. Good, good, good stuff. Bravo. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at discussing Ben's exit. Tissues at the ready, Ballon fans. Right then, ladies and gents, uh, we've had an exit. Ben Mitchell has left EastEnders, and I can confirm uh, that this was because it was actually a little bit unclear, I think, at the end of the week, whether that actually yeah. was his last episode, but that was his last episode. Um. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. Oh my goodness me. I mean Right, can we just talk about it from our opinions and not talk about Yeah, I mean I've no interest in riling For up now. For now. Corners of the corners of the East Tennis fan community. It's that's not our place. Um no. you know, I think it's important to remember that different characters mean different amounts to different people. And it might mystify Definitely. some people as to why some people get really emotionally attached to certain characters and not others. But every part has a lid and you can't help who you fall in love with, right? So Rob loves Janine. I love you Janine. Love ben and Other Colin. Pe- yeah, some people are absolutely mystified that anyone could love Janine, you know? It's that's just how True. it goes. And, you know, stories like Ben's really resonate with people. So I can understand why certain people are really, really gutted by this. Um, I mean, it's come out of the blue, in, hasn't it? We've not seen it... Ben for a while on screen either prior to No, this, we haven't. Feel. And I think that, yeah, I mean, let's be real. You could sort of tell that this story was kind of thrown together in a little bit, can't you? You know, it was... You can. It all felt a little bit rushed. What I would say, though, is that they managed to get quite a lot of pathos out of it by the end of the week you know, really sold by uh, the script and by the performances of Tony Clay and Bax Bowden, who, if you, I mean, you have, you'd have to be living under a rock in the Sanders fan, fan community to not know sort of what's been going on and why this has happened. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we're not going to go too far into that because that's not our place either. Life happens and Life these happens. things have to happen on TV shows to account, yeah. to account for so, that. I mean, the, the basic idea of this was that Ben has been arrested uh, for committing credit card fraud whilst he was in America searching for this cure for Lola. Do you know what? I think it's all quite believable. I think they've done quite well with how they've written it. Yeah, well, how else did he afford it? Weren't we all questioning it at the time? When he was in mean... America, we were all like, what money has he gone to America with? Because everything's expensive, especially healthcare. What yeah, was, I'm I know. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you can sort. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, Ben is the sort of person that can get hold of money quite easily. You know, he's got filthy for God's sake. You know, whether you know, arguably, did he need to do this? Especially when Richie yeah, okay, let, yeah, read yeah, out the list of things that. that he'd done, like I was like getting a business class flight back to London. It's like you didn't need to do that, did you, Ben? Didn't need that to do was that. dumb because that were obviously <laughs> in his name. It's like why yeah. do you sign yourself in while you're at it, Ben? Like, yeah, you'd be, yeah, yeah, you'd have been in less trouble if you'd sort of. If sort of hidden in the luggage compartment, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, you can sort of... 
it, it, and it all kind of came out of left wing. It's not like the trip to America has ever been mentioned since. But I'm saying it's believable because they had to write something. And yeah. what else were they supposed to write, to be honest, that would given, be kind of believable? Yeah, I mean, given the circumstances, I'm actually, you've got to kind of give them some credit for it turning out mm, as well as yeah. it did, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I thought that Max was very good this week, I have to say. it's And I, you know, as as much, and I've said this many times, but as much as Ben has absolutely driven me insane as a character at times and i mean into the point where i want to chuck my remote at the telly um i've never criticized max bowden's performance before and there's no reason to and he's going off to do a play now he's just about to go on yes. tour. i think it's i think it's called bird watcher or something like that yes. where you know he's playing bird, a war bird song bird, it's something yeah, to do something with, like it's, yeah it, he's playing basically uh it's, it's all to do with war and sort of the effects of war for a laugh bless him i bet max bowden's dying to do a sitcom <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never, never gets happy so roles, does he? Bless him, bless no, him. He um, so I mean, this also is the end of Balam as we know it as well. Yeah, was sorry, just was um Max Bowden one of John Sen's casts? Um, I want to say that he came in a little bit before John Sen when Kate Oates was running the oh, show on her own. Interesting. I oh, think because we've had I a lot think... of um Waterloo Road actors on EastEnders and I wondered if because Max mm. Bowden was on there because I would just was. think about his other role yeah prior to yes. um so I mean let's talk about the story and what actually got yes. presented to us I mean yeah it kind of it was it, it all happened within the space of a week you know one minute mm-hmm. everything's kind of okay by the end of the week Ben's been arrested and is being shipped off to America to be in prison for a little bit and it was sort of like the way the story was being written throughout the week. You sort of like like there's rubbing salt in the wounds of the Ballam fans, and then there's throwing bleach on top of it as well. Like you know him falling out with Lexi, and Lexi. The last conversation that Ben and Lexi have before he goes is Lexi saying that she's just really disappointed in it, and <laughs> like Ben crying, and it's just give him a break. Um, I kind of really enjoyed what we got from Callum this week as well. Mm. I thought Callum had actually a really probably Callum's strongest week in many a year. Um, with the stuff from with Phil. Phil and Callum are two characters that I think have really sort of earned scenes together and they never really seem to get them. You know, there's a lot actually to be taken from Phil having any form of relationship with a boyfriend of Ben's. Mm. You know, they've sort of really sort of thrown away the the history of Phil's homophobia and difficulty in accepting Ben's sexuality. And for him, for Ben, for, and they kind of addressed that this week with Phil basically essentially saying, "God, look at me sat here chatting to Ben's husband." You know, we never thought that was going to happen. So it's a shame that they've never really sort of continued that journey of Phil really accepting Ben's sexuality, rather than they just sort of like. I think it kind of came about that when Ben nearly died on the floor of the Vic after Hunter shot him, and I think from there then on, it was basically implied that the sexuality doesn't matter. You nearly died in front of me, so I don't care if you yeah. pay or not. I think was the idea, <laughs> but it sort of. Did you like that comment though that he said at the start of the week when they were preparing for Callum's birthday, and he went, "Well, if oh. you're going to be the boy." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That were a genius comment there. Like, I liked it. Very uh, I, I like, got, I'm not yeah. saying it's a good Phil comment. Phil being a but... di- Phil being a dinosaur. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. that was the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the other thing, of course. It all had to happen on Callum's birthday as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Never, never allowed a second of happiness together. Is right, right to the very end. Um, but the thing saying. is, what well, this is the thing. It was very much kind of led by angst, as their relationship and all mm. their stories have been all the way up to this point, really. Um, and their relationship dynamic has really been sort of addressed by Callum this week, I thought, mm. when they had those scenes that were, you know, they were talking through the cell door. And Callum said stuff to Ben that some viewers have been thinking about Ben for a long, long time, like saying, oh, it's all the Ben show, is it? Oh, you're making this and all about you, Ben. And do you know what? I disagreed with him saying that because I don't Shh. think... Really? No, like genuinely i don't see that he does these things deliberately i think he's just ben that's yeah. just what he does he's not doing it because he wants attention no but that is ben in that that is ben though isn't it it's somebody yeah who... but i don't think he thought oh like he, i thought callum were making out oh look lola's lola's suffering there's no attention on me so i want there to be att-. i don't think that was i don't think that was ben's intention whatsoever not deliberately i no. think it's just how yeah not deliberately but that's what callum was implying but that's how me. that's how ben makes the situation feel i think is what he was saying right okay because i thought he was just like you're just an attention seeker and i thought i think you're being a bit harsh actually i don't think you were going out looking for attention it's just how he handles things isn't it mm. 
completely the wrong way, but hey, that's Ben. Yeah. You knew what you were getting yourself into, Callum. Don't start throwing it back in his face just because he's got done for a bit of fraud in the States. <laughs> I mean, it just it's it's madness, isn't it, really? That of all the things that Ben's done over the years, this is the thing that lands him in prison for a long time. But he's kind of genius from the writers because you can't you there's no way that anyone can get him out of international fraud. No, Especially not even anything Richie. to do with the USA. Exactly, exactly right. I hey, mean, and at least you know, at least we saw Richie. A bit this of week. a salt down road, a bit of a salt down road in London. Fine, yeah. Richie's on it. Yeah. But international fraud, yeah. no chance, pal. Assault, a human trafficking, don't worry about it. Bit of credit oh, yeah, card fraud, nothing. though. Bit of credit card fraud, ooh, ooh. you're screwed. Mm, exactly. Um, yeah, so I mean, I did enjoy it. The, the I get I, this is the thing. I think that what we got out of what they had to put together to to accommodate this exit was as good as they could have made it. I think. Yeah. Um, the difficult were, circumstances for everyone. It was difficult who were involved circumstances, in it, let's be honest. and I think that you know it's a case of the the hyper fans of Ben would not have been happy whatever they were given in terms of Ben's exit. In all honesty, and I think that. It's the it's not written. Of it. It's not written for the hyper fans though. No, it's, it's been not. written because they've got a situation and they needed to get him written off in the but best actually, way that they could. I for think some that... real life circumstances, whatever yeah, that may be. Yeah, but so I also... you just got to accept it. And that's but it. I also think that there was elements, there were scenes where it, but... they were sort of they they were placated in that way. Like that last scene between Ben and Callum, some people found really emotional watching. And I and I got it. You know, they were they're having a really kind of honest conversation. Uh, which is something that their relationship has been lacking a lot of the time, which is why they kind of feel so distant from each other sometimes, mm. because Ben has such difficulty in being emotionally honest until he is right on the edge. And, we, and when he's kind of like, OK, yeah, I'll talk. And it's like, why didn't you do this before? We wouldn't be in this situation. So that's very much been Callum's biggest issue with Ben throughout the entirety of their relationship. Yeah. And it was sort of very understandable how Callum would, at, because then we kind of got two scenes with, with two big scenes with, Callum this week where they had that moment of Callum going do you know what yeah I'm done see you later enjoy prison walked off and you sort of felt wow is that how they're ending Ballum? wow I know I yeah well. I was surprised that's gonna that, go down yeah. well. but do you know what it would have felt actually kind of it, I'd have been all right with that in all honesty I wouldn't I would like that would not be believable if this is how this is ending ah, see, I, Callum's I, dumping I, Ben no way it'd be Ben that would be pushing Callum away that's yeah, but that's what that's now. what that's what he was saying though. But like you you have you've brushed me to the point where I cannot so I cannot so this isn't sustainable anymore, is basically what he was saying. Well, and it's actually, he's done, he's done so much worse than credit cards. He has, but it, it's, a straw, the it's a straw that broke the camel's broke back, the though, isn't it? Back. Straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> be, do you know what I mean? So yeah. actually, I would have believed that as a, as a, because I think a lot of the, the issues that I've had with Callum as a character is that ever since he got with Ben, that's his that's that's who he is that's his personality yeah, I know. It's, it's his Ben's identity. boyfriend you know sort of kind of goes kind of pulls a face and goes oh ben and then kisses him on the forehead and then yeah, you know sort of I kind know. of goes about his life as a policeman uh and sort of rolls over and takes all the emotional difficulties of being in a relationship with ben and being in a relationship with the mitchell causes anybody you know mm. so I think it would have been perfectly understandable for them to end it like that. But then they had that final last scene where even Callum couldn't say, you know, oh, no, I, I need to come back and tell you how much I love you. Yeah. I will wait for you. And they had that quite genuinely sweet moment between them. You, you'd have been, you'd, you'd have to have had a heart of stone not to have a little bit of sort yeah. of feeling in that last scene. It had, a, it had a nice level of pathos to it. And they sort of left things on a decent note and Ben's going to, plead guilty and go to prison do his time probably be let out with good for good behavior and be out in for good behavior know. ben are you joking are you kidding well you know <laughs> <laughs> he can't help himself that's how he's got he into this mess in first place oh, it's all right then though, isn't it so do you think hmm. they know what they're going to do with ben is ben going to get out in a year and be recast I mean, it kind of, you kind of suspect that a recap. I thought I was kind of, to be honest with you, I was expecting a Julius theme by the end of the week. So that we is didn't a get very that. good point. Yeah, we I've didn't, we didn't get a Julius theme. That as well. mm. We didn't get the Why? Julius theme, so I kind of wonder whether they're sort of. Did they get a Julius theme if they're not going off in a, some kind of vehicle? Are you, are you entitled to <laughs> yeah, a Julius it's theme very when important. you're being deported yeah. to America? Maybe we could have uh, yeah. had him on a on a plane in handcuffs mm. with a bit of Julius theme. Won't feel right, would Wouldn't it? Wouldn't feel right. Feel though, right. to be fair, the storyline didn't suit the Julius theme. In all, no, in all honesty, no. and I think actually, 
you, Ben is the sort of character that this will happen. To. It's not the first time Ben's gone off to be, to go to prison, is it? No. You know, and he's never had a Julius scene in any of the time that that's ever happened exactly. to him. And I think people want, would have wanted a Julius scene for Max more than Ben, I think, at that moment. Yeah, would. true. So, and for the end of Balam as well. I don't, I don't feel like they could recast Ben that soon after what, when his prison sentence would end? Well, I mean, Peter wasn't didn't have that much of a gap between uh, between actors, did they? Yeah, but we recast to an old Peter, so that kind of worked. So would they do? Would they bring Harry Reid back or someone like that? Do you think? Interesting. I Maybe. did like. I see. I I liked Harry Reid a lot. I was kind of I'm nothing against Max Bowden, but I was really good. No, no, Harry nothing. Because I liked see, Harry Reid's interpretation. But now Max, quite a lot. but Max Bowden is now Ben to me. I don't. Mm. I don't know how you could recast Ben again because. At first, I was like, who's this guy? This is not Ben. And now I'm like, he's totally Ben. So if they brought someone else in, I don't think... I don't know. Great Hard, Johnny, aren't we, talking a witch? Is Johnny the new Ben? <laughs> I mean, I'd argue there's a lot of elements in in Johnny, in the in, in Ben... No, what am I trying to say? There's a lot of elements of Ben in the new Johnny, I, I would you argue. Go. You know, yeah. so... Um, like we said at the start, do we? I mean, they 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 spoke a good game with Callum, saying that he was never going to even look at you know. So instantly said that Callum's not going to have any sort of love story in the coming months either. So, do we believe that Callum's going to remain completely and utterly celibate until Ben gets out of prison, or is he going to meet somebody else? Or until Ben does something in prison, and then how Callum is that going to get back to him though? How is that going to really get back to him? And would and you got to argue, you got to also wonder, would True. Ben do that after the way they've just left things? Callum, you know, yeah. would you of think he, he would. would? You think he yeah. would? Yeah, it's uh, what's the word? <laughs> Not self destruct. You know what I mean? What's the word? Is it self destruct? Ben, self- I could imagine him. Yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, let's call it self destruct because I know there's yeah, a sure. word I'm thinking of. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, the but the thing is though, he's going to have difficulty meeting. I mean, you know, he's, he's going to prison, so he's not going to meet the love of his life there. You would argue. Yeah, British prison. I'm sure he can find someone. In prison. He's adaptable. <laughs> He's adaptable. Yeah. I don't Callum know. said it to him like, "Oh, all those like he says something like, oh, all those American men in prison. prison are you going to help yourself?'" <laughs> and you know, I don't know. I think something. Oh, Ben's just going to push Callum away. Obviously, it'll all happen. Maybe, maybe Ben will tell Jay or Phil something. They'll, they'll get back to Callum, and then Callum will go right. Well, then Prince Albert it is. I'm going to find myself someone. Hey, Johnny. You're yeah, a I mean, bit of my ex. Is there a reason? I don't think why... Johnny though. Well, now you wonder this. Is there a reason why they are turning Johnny like quite Ben like in the sense that is he maybe heading towards Callum in a relationship sense? Do you think? See, for me, they're two almost brother like with each other because obviously Callum came in because he was Lee's best friend. So would mm. he really go for his best friend's brother? Like I said, they're kind of family with each other. They're a family group chat. I mean, I know they're not actually related, but to me, I don't know. I wouldn't be up for that. But then again, we've not seen much of Johnny. Maybe they can develop that relationship and we'll all be on board with it and they'll be... Or you could give you could put him with or you could put him with Felix, you know, give Felix something to do. Felix is in dire need of a storyline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Give give Felix a relationship. He's it's it's a policeman and a lawyer would be quite a good fit there, to be fair, Rob, wouldn't they? A policeman and a drag queen would be a good fit together. Why not, eh? Why not? Why Why not? not? Yeah, you're quite right. You know, and kind of have a look at Felix and his and his sort of his relationship status, because that's just been completely and utterly ignored. We've not had a single storyline really for Felix on his own since he started. So giving him a boyfriend, it'd be good with Lexi be... as well, Felix, wouldn't it? Well, we've said I thought Felix actually had a really good time this week, especially with seeing with Brittany. Well, Brittany you know, I, yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed that. I'm not saying you know that Callum immediately needs to move on. Of course, I'm no. not. You know, he's going through essentially a grieving process at the moment where he's lost his mm. husband. For now, we don't know how long how long Ben's going to get sentenced for. I suspect we'll find out next week because we ain't seeing this hearing. So it's I suspect we will find out by Richie or. Phil will put the phone down and say he got 10 years or something like that next next week. So we'll mm. know exactly how long we're, in theory, losing Ben for. Because obviously, as soon as he comes out of prison, you'd think that Ben would be running straight back to Walford. So I think... Yeah, especially for Lexi. It will, if it's only a matter of months that he's in prison for, that will give us an indication that we're getting a recast Ben mm. in the coming months, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Well, we don't know, do we? Let's Last see what they say. Too. Um, let us know what you thought of Ben's exit uh, in the comment section. Keep it peaceful if you want. <laughs> Don't argue too much about it, okay? It's okay. Um, but 
you know, do you know fair play to Max Bowers, and I think given the circumstances, he did bloody well this week because that can't those can't have been easy scenes to film. In all honesty, no, definitely if, not. If you everything that we have been told is true, like, you know, and we, I don't exactly. believe everything I read in the papers. So he he know. still he still did a good job. Yeah. Of playing Ben this week. He is a the, bloody good actor. Feelings behind the scenes, who knows? I don't know. Who cares? He, who cares at the end of the day? You know, he is a bloody good actor. He has had some absolutely insane emotional stories thrown yeah, at him to in, be this, fair, I don't, in quite yeah. a short amount of time. I think, you know, he's yeah. he played Ben for five years and he has, in that time, had uh, a rape storyline. He has been a gangster. He has coped with death. He has had an eating disorder storyline. So it's been really constantly intense storylines for him to, to, to be doing mm, and he's and he's delivered each and every one of them you know so you can't criticize max and if there is anything going on with him then that's that's what's happening he'll get himself sorted and with that amount of talent he'll have a fantastic career so good luck to you max i hope you do well in life um and i hope your tour goes well as well because that looks good he looks he, he's yeah, working he he's look working good. already you know he's found himself work already and best of luck he's going on tour have a look online Go see Max in theatre. Good luck to him. Um, but yes, for now, that is the end of Ben and that is the end of Balam. So uh, watch this space for what... I hope this is... We should have the... worn black today, Rob. It's we like should have worn... At the, very least, at the very least, we should have worn black armbands. Um, yeah. I hope that this is the start... Because I think this the problem with this now is that it's either going to be the making or just the general fading away of Callum. Yeah, I, th- I think I don't know. We've got to watch this space. They've got who knows. We don't know what they had, what what had they originally got planned for Balam anyway. You know, how's it all going to tie in? This is why I'm thinking it is going to be Johnny, like you said. The mm. Mm, we'll have to see. wait and see. Good luck. Right then, ladies and gents. Um, oh, gold star, Ray. What are you giving yours to this week? Do you know what? Even though you don't actually deserve it, but I don't know when I'll be able to do it again. It's going to have to be Ben, isn't it? I'll Max Bowden did a good performance. It's not I, for his behaviour. I'll give <laughs> mine to. It. I'll give mine to Callum. You mean Ben's behaviour? I'll yeah, give mine. Ben's I'll gi- I'll give mine to Callum because actually I th- I I did enjoy Callum this week. He had some good scenes. Uh, so there you go. Ben and Callum gold stars this week. See, there you go. Uh, right, ladies and gents. Final section of the podcast as usual is comments from you guys. Right, before we get on to comments from you, a little bit of news. Uh, Classic EastEnders fans, you are in for a treat because I think in the run-up to the 40th anniversary, a Classic EastEnders episodes are going to be uploaded every single... A whole year's worth of Classic EastEnders episodes is going to be uploaded every single month until by the time we get to Christmas, we will have basically the entirety of 2008 to 2024 all available on the iPlayer. Oh, yeah. Love that. It's Love be amazing. That. That's that. I mean, I don't need to leave the house, do I? Who say who needs fresh air? I say who needs it. I need to um, seriously catch up. I'm only on 2010. Well, according to the BBC uh, EastEnders oh Facebook nine. page, uh, BBC iPlayer is already home to a great offering of classic EastEnders episodes from 2008 to 2011, and this is set to get bigger as the entire EastEnders collection for 2012 will be made available to stream on Tuesday, the 25th of March. That is now up. Uh, subsequent monthly uploads will follow for the duration of the year so that by Christmas Day 2024, viewers will be able to stream over 2,000 episodes with the entire EastEnders collection from 2008 to the present day available. Amazing. So that's exciting. I uh, Yeah. I mean, people do love a bit of retrospection, I think, for EastEnders uh, because it's the soap that more than any relies on referring back to its own history. So there is I think that... We often get comments from people saying they've only just started watching or yeah. they've not watched for a few years. So it gives people a chance to catch up. And you know what? We don't remember everything, do we? No. No. So it's nice. all going to be there for reference. So I'm really Real. excited about that. Marvellous. Yeah, love it. Um, comments this week. Re, have you got a comment to start us off? Yes, I've got one from Rachel Alice June on Instagram who said, I felt Ben's exit was a bit clunky, but that last scene, crying emoji. And I was actually scared for a second that Lexi was leaving. She's my new favourite Mitchell. Dean and his shiny white sneakers need to go now. Love of Arnie and Priya. Yeah, that's yeah, fair enough. We I didn't did mention wonder. Lexi, actually, did we? No, and her standing up to Richie and saying, uh, we don't pay... She's a little brat sometimes, isn't she? She's a precocious child. She really, really is. What did she say? I would, I'm, I'm a, a Mitchell. Mitchell. We don't pay, and we don't pay you, to you to keep your gob shut. Yeah. No, we don't pay you to be this quiet. Is yeah. Why, this is why we know that Richie hates kids. Can I just... <laughs> <laughs> I've dealt with enough of them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, 
Uh, Alison Riley uh, commented and saying, it's upsetting, but I really feel that Ben will eventually divorce Cullen so that he can go his own way. With Denise wanting a divorce from Jack, if this also goes through, we will not have any married couples on the square. Only a few couples living together. No way. Re yes oh, way. wow. Yes way. Yeah, I'm just thinking in my head now. Well, unless Elaine and George get married. So, yeah, but they, yeah, but Cindy and George are going to have an affair know, at any I'm moment. <laughs> I'm just thinking that. So that's yeah, not, wow. that's not that's not gonna last. Nobody's that's married. Something. What the hell? That's, yeah, that's madness, isn't it? Well, Jack and Denise are a civil partnership, aren't they? As well, anyway. Yeah. So, so I mean, class? no, that is still married. They're still yeah. married, but it's not like it's not, it's not like we even saw their wedding. No, that's true. So <laughs> for all we know, yeah. So yeah, that, that's wow. mad, isn't it? In a soap, that is... there's not a single married couple on the square. Yeah, that is crazy. They need to sort that, that out. Are. They need yeah, to sort that do. out. We do. God. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Um, wow. Next comment. Another one from Instagram from S-E-E-E -E -E fan. Avani is still in my heart this week. She's been so funny. I can't believe how nervous Priya was with Martin. Super cute. I feel so sorry for Lexi and Ben with his mental health at the minute. Sad and glad Jean has gone to Mo's, but Dean needs slapping down. Slapping down. He, he does, does need I mean, slapping down. He does need slapping down. I mean, it's... The Dean stuff again. It continues on. Um, I, he is heading towards a comeuppance. I think there's no way. There's no two ways about that. But quite what this will comeuppance will be remains to be seen. But I feel like that might kind of. Come, I think Harvey's going to play a big role in that. And I feel like whoever Gene comes back, I wouldn't be surprised if you know we get Mo back, we get Freddie back, and then imagine if Shirley climbs out the back of a taxi. I'd that'd love be, that. That'd, that'd be a great brilliant. surprise. That'd be yeah, a really cool surprise, wouldn't it? Uh, and final comment of the week, Gillian Maynard says, I hated how rushed Ben's exit was. However, the acting was first class. Max and Tony have a chemistry that was written well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pete Lawson. It shined and it was gripping. I bawled like a baby at the last scene. Ben will be back with what fate remains to be seen, but I personally have enjoyed the Balam era. Well, the acting anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as a relationship, they have been tricky at times, I think it's fair to say, but they've been a, they've been a very memorable pairing. You know, yeah. not on many couples you can instantly sort of remember with such vividness. <laughs> give them Very that. Very true. Very I will true. give them that. Um, so that's it for another week, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can do the following. You can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark, on Twitter and Instagram at E20 After Dark. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can listen to us on Apple and all your favourite podcast sites. Drop us an email at e20afterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to buy us coffee, you can do so by going on buymeacoffee.com forward slash E20 After Dark. And thereby closes our 50th episode, Ray. Can you believe it? 50 episodes. Oh, it's our year anniversary next week. And next week Us? is our one year. We're one. As if we've been doing it a year. What a That's year. Crazy. It's mad, isn't it? I've that been is... doing pod I've been doing EastEnders podcasting for nearly four years now. Wow. Yeah. I've That's I've mad. been doing it for nearly a year now. You are so... but a young <laughs> sapling. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, there we go. Our birthday next week. We might, we'll wear a party hat or something. We'll get drunk yeah. during the during the show. Why not? Woohoo! Love a thing. Yeah, Love a thing okay, what we can yeah. do. Maybe not drunk, Rob. I've got to drive happened? for the rest of the day. And it's Friday. What has happened to us? It's a Friday morning. It used to be, used to be any excuse when we that we'd get drunk together. It used to be any excuse that we'd get drunk together. Why in the day? I oh, will have a drink, shall we? <laughs> now it's sort of like mild, you know. I'm driving, I've got a kid to look after, I've got yeah, work, you know, later. responsibilities and that, yeah. Boring, anyway. So, I will, <laughs> we will speak to you next week in some guys. So, until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.